Hey all, so excited to actually kick off season 36 now. These wars are counting. Um, we are taking it a little bit easier this time around. We are planning, but we do have some new planners figuring some things out and kind of bouncing things between them. We're not using any loyalty boosts. We are using rainbow boosts. But my intent is still to not die this season. I hope I haven't jinxed myself by saying that. But let's start off with this Hyperion. This is a rank 4 Hyperion. Um, he was my most recent rank 4. And he is very good for Conduit. He is less good for anything when your parries don't work, as right there. But what I've noticed with him and Conduit is that you really do want to throw as many special ones as you can. And while I am trying to weave in some heavies, I think that going forward in this season, I often just want to throw special ones, even without the heavies. Like right there, um, on that last one, I should have thrown that special one on that short combo. I shouldn't have backed off and waited for the special two. It just... I don't know. It's, um... You want to keep the heal block up. You need maximum uptime on that. And even if your incinerates are weaker, even if it feels like you're doing less damage, for a lot of these conduit fights, you really are doing more damage overall just by keeping the heal block up. And so that's something that I'm kind of balancing because historically when I played Hyperion, and I'm a little bit out of practice, but historically I tend to focus on keeping his attack as high as possible, as many Furies as possible, and I would often think about the special ones not as my default, but as a way of locking in damage when I had a lot of Furies. Like, oh wow, I'm up to seven Furies and three charges. I'll throw a special one to lock in that high attack value over a long period of time. But this requires a shift, like I said, because you just kind of need to spam the special one. And so I'm kind of fighting against some old muscle memory that I kind of forgot I had. And so then there's this fight, where I just should have dueled for this heavy counter. <sighs> and then that was... Um, much, much worse, because I the second one I was trying to just dex both hits, and I was early on the first one. So yeah, I, I should have done a duel here. This is 100% my bad. If I am trying to not die this season, I really need to stick to my own advice there and continue to do my duels, especially before I try anything like a heavy counter. It wasn't necessary here. I shouldn't have done it without practicing it. Especially because Hype can just win this fight absolutely fine on his own. I do think that going to the special three first is good. Um, this is not a conduit fight. The special threes are not triggering the conduit knockdown anyway. I actually confirmed that that is intended for the season with um, the Kabam designer for war. So starting off with a special three is just great for Hyperion. You get those three cosmic charges up. Those are effectively permanent furies. And then you get the rest of the fight rolling. So I think that was definitely the case there. At that point, the specials you throw don't really matter because either of them is going to trigger masochism. The point is just to kill Migs quickly without pairing because that's what gives him light energy and can cause problems. And then we are up to a fight I've taken many, many times before. This is rank four Penny Parker on Power Snack. We no longer have Defiance. It's not going to matter. Reed was, in my opinion, the single best option for this fight before Defiance. He was far and away the best option during Defiance, and I think he's the best option again with it gone. It's just a very simple fight as long as you have House of X. So we are going to trigger um, some auto blocks in here, but I think Almost all of them are going to be in the passive stun window, which he is not able to purify, and so we're not actually going to get auto-blocked and take that damage. So again, another input issue there. Um, so far, that's most of the damage I've taken, which is not super fun. But things are going well. So there's always some RNG right there, because 
if that auto block had triggered on the medium we threw into that passive stun instead of on the first hit of the special two, then it would have worn off by the time we then landed that first projectile hit of the special two, and then she wouldn't have auto blocked it, and we would have landed the whole thing, we would have knocked her down, we would have refreshed the debuffs, it would have been a lot safer. Because we got a little bit unlucky and it triggered later, we just had to know that she was going to play passive because we'd hit into her block, we took a small amount of power burn damage, and then all that mattered after she blocked our special two was finding our opening for the next heavy. As soon as we did that, our debuffs were safe, we could get back to the rest of the fight. That right there, 90 seconds in, is the first time I triggered Power Snack, and we reversed it, because we were fully ramped. So, just not something Reed really has to worry about. Suppression lets you keep control of the fight so much, just from landing your hits, that you don't even have to really worry that much about dexing to bait specials, even against somebody less willing to throw them than Penny, and so you have time to ramp up your Petrifies and counter Power Snack by the time you finally trigger it. Just really fantastic option there. Moving on to Eye Hulk here, you're going to see in, uh, in Prime Display here what I'm talking about, where I just should have done absolutely nothing but spam special ones. And I think I actually tried to be better about that here. Um, yeah, see, there I go for it again, rather than pushing to the special two. What exactly was the mistake? I think the mistake was I tried to avoid triggering the regen from the node, which I just shouldn't have bothered with because I was spamming special ones. So I tried to block the second hit of that special there and then dex out of the last one, and it didn't let me, so I got stunned. I've now been pushed to the special three. That's a bit of a problem. Because we've lost uptime on our heal block, he's triggered conduit, we've given him a lot of healing, and our progress on his health bar without triggering gamma has just halted completely. This regen triggering hurt us so badly, and there's another problem. Because the special one um, is inflicting energy damage. I Hulk is healing from that energy damage instantly as long as we don't have a heal block up. That is triggering that build up node that's causing him to go unblockable. And so we had to back off. He had more time to gain even more gamma. And so we are going to have to worry about him healing. It's not the end of the world. Um, I'm really pretty strongly of the opinion that you should not lose a fight to I Hulk just because he goes unblockable. That's just part of his kit, and you should be comfortable with it. But we could have avoided it if we had just fully dexed that one special one, because the regen would not have mattered if we had maintained the heal block, which we could have done if we hadn't gotten stunned. So yeah, for any conduit fight this season, it just really feels like, overwhelmingly, the play for hype is spam special one and stick only to that. So, like I said, I'm fighting some old instincts there, but those two fights really kind of set it in stone for me, and I think it's going to get easier going forward. So, Buffet, very similar to Power Snack for Reed, it's just not something he has to worry about. Now, this neutralize could cause us some problems, because if we dexed here, buffet wouldn't be the problem. The rupture from trying to trigger the dex buff would be the problem. But, again, it is easier to bait specials with Reed because you have to do it less often. Because not only are you knocking the opponent down so often with your, uh, with your heavies and your specials, but your opponent is just gaining fewer bars of power thanks to the suppression. Only now has Rinch regained his second bar. And the evade is also something that helps you out by allowing you to basically dex out of specials without triggering dex, as you saw there. There's just a lot of advantages here. So now we are fully ramped on our pre-fight debuffs. He still has to throw one more special one before that's going. But 
he's been in between zero and five mystical charges basically the entire fight. We have absolutely nothing to worry about. Have not triggered a buff once. No ruptures. No buffet. Yeah, Reed crushes this. I think Rintra is a decent placement here because of a lot of the go-to options. But if you can get a Reed over here, he's definitely not that scary of a placement. So moving right on to another Reed fight that is legitimately still a scary placement. Um, this wasn't the easiest fight, even with Defiance giving you more options, but especially now, with Defiance gone, with Torch blacklisted, and with most alliances at this level banning Spider-Man 2099 outright, if you have a Quicksilver, this fight's nice and easy. If you don't, it's doable with Reed, but this is kind of scary. As you can see, I was guilty of doing something I don't do very often. I just flat out checked the score. I knew there weren't a lot of fights on either side. We had clearly lost by a good chunk, and so I decided not to use a precious power start. I do have one expiring before too long, but given where that war was, at, or given where this war was at that point, I think I'll just use that power start in the uh, Saturday war instead of this last time and that'll probably be better for the Alliance overall. So the key here is trying to make sure that Mangog throws his special ones, and that when he inevitably goes unblockable, you yourself have a special to punish him with it. Not to punish, but just to throw it into him so that you can um, get rid of the unstoppable, because that's the real problem. Now, Reed can also um, stagger it, but that did not work this time. And so I do have to throw it into him. I didn't play that perfectly. I definitely could have made it such that I did throw the special one before um, he threw his special one and went unblockable and unstoppable, but that was just an error on my part. Still, I'd rather that than push him to the special two. And so far, we've been pretty good about that. We're not yet fully ramped, because the, I do think that, with or without Defiance, the safe way of playing this is going to include throwing a special one somewhere in there in the middle. It's either going to be to cancel out the Unstoppable, or before it happens, to stagger it away. But now we're fully ramped, because once he goes through his full thing once, now we can back off and wait. Build up to another special two ramp up, now we throw the special one to try and get the stagger, and good. He throws it, it staggers the unstoppable and the unblockable. Because that backed us into the wall, we were able to heavy counter it. Because our decks didn't work at all there, uh, we were not able to heavy counter that one. <laughs> we took it to the face. But I run the Iniquity Mastery maxed, and we had um, our Careful Study passive up. So I think that special one, if I'm remembering correctly, was only doing 10% of its total damage because that's where weakness effects cap is at 90% reduction and 75% on the careful study passive plus 36% from iniquity means that I was definitely at that cap. So yeah, the special two is still dangerous, but I think that particular run at the fight shows that if you can hold on to your ramp, if you can keep baiting out special ones, then even if you get hit by them, even with Aspect of Evolution triggering multiple times and causing Mangog to get scarier, you can still survive. And I have survived a special two there with Reed as well, you just can't really survive two. I do think he remains a good option. I think that he is actually outright safe if you approach it the way that I described with a power start. Without a power start, as you saw, I did kind of have to get a little bit lucky with the AI, but it's still a good counter. It's going to be interesting to see how that node performs this season. I really do think that some wars may come down to who has Quicksilvers to just kind of trivialize it. Because if you haven't seen that fight, he does trivialize it. Anyway, it's good to be back. I love making war videos, and I love war in general. This this one was no exception. Rank 4 Hyperion, Rank 4 Reed. Off to a good start. 
look forward to the rest of the season, and I will catch y'all on the next one. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and take care.